On November 10th, Aaron and Zach walked into a swirling nest of bucks on an isolated piece of public land. The next morning, they head back to hunt the same stand. If the deer move the same way they did the day before, the hunters should see plenty of action before their feet again touch the solid ground. Well, it's November 11th. Zach and I actually came in here yesterday and had a pretty crazy hunt. Hopefully the same thing happens again today. We've got the same wind, but there is some storms coming in. It's about 60 degrees. It's a lot warmer than I'd like it to be. But uh, we brought the decoy in. There's this little waterway right here in the field. And it's five, six foot tall weeds, most of it, but the waterway is, is quite a bit lower grass, and there's several trails that are coming through right here around the stand. I doubt we see very much out of here. I mean, we're, we're, if we do see something, it's going to be from a long ways away, but the hope is that we'll see them from a distance. We'll call to them, and they'll see the decoy and maybe come in for a shot. We just spotted a good buck and a doe out here in this field, about 200 yards away. He's with that doe, but as they come out into that thick stuff, there's a good chance he'll lose track of her. I'm going to try grunting at him, but right now they're slowly working their way this way. He's coming. He's coming, isn't he? He can't take that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Was that cool or what? He came straight into that decoy. I mean, 15 yards right at the decoy. You can't ask for anything better than that. Public land, that's a, that's a trophy right there. That's a five, six year old buck. Pouring blood. Right there he is. Oh, dude. He's a toad, too. Holy cow. Look at that thing. Look how heavy he is. Double lung shot. Coming to a decoy. 
What more can you ask for on public land? That is incredible. Nice, dude. <laughs> Holy crap, man. He is. Look at how heavy he is. <laughs> well, we got him tagged, drug him up out of the marsh here, right up here to where we shot him. And we didn't see a single deer this morning until right at 10 o'clock when this buck and a doe popped out of that creek crossing across the way here. We grunted this buck in, he came straight into the decoy, it took him several minutes, he eventually left that doe, come straight across the field, postured up to that decoy and gave me a perfect 22 yard shot. Without that decoy, I don't think we'd have killed this buck. I mean, we're dealing with a 10 acre field here and the only reason why he came over here is because he heard another buck grunt and then he saw that buck and uh, came over to check it out. It doesn't work like that all the time, but this morning it definitely did and I couldn't be happier. What a great, mature public land buck. We use muddy safe lines on every tree stand setup. In fact, I have told my employees that I will fire them if I ever catch them hunting without one. That is how important these things are. If you bow hunt long enough, it is not a matter of if you will fall. It is a matter of when and how far. I always stay attached to the tree. I can't emphasize this enough. Muddy safe lines are the most important piece of gear you can take into the woods each fall. This is the Cabela's Instinct Reliant Whitetail 3.5 millimeter rubber boot. Really like a lot of the features of this boot. It's an overbuilt rubber hunting boot that is made for a hardcore whitetail hunter. It's got neoprene for comfort on the inside with a rubber shell that's going to keep it waterproof and scent free. They're lightweight, durable, so if you're in the market for a whitetail hunting boot, I recommend you check out the Cabela's Instinct Reliant Whitetail 3.5 millimeter rubber boot. This is a little product that we use all the time on the public land, and uh, it's the muddy climbing sticks with the uh, rope cam system. What we do a lot of times on public land is we just pack in four or five of these things on our backpack to get in and out of our tree stands. That's gonna keep people from getting up there and maybe monkeying with our stands or trying to steal them or something. And it uh, gives us the opportunity to reuse these sticks on several different setups. So if you're wanting to be more portable, and especially if you're hunting public land, Recommend you to check out some of these muddy products. While Aaron and his friends celebrate a hard earned public land buck, I head to a redneck blind down in a bottom where I can ride out the rain and wind that is looming just beyond the horizon. Fifty miles to the south, Paul Marshall and Scott Reinman have been in the stand all day. They too are hoping for an uptick in buck activity before the storm hits. It's about two o'clock. Just give you a little update on the deer. I don't know, probably about 12, 12.30 we saw a buck and a doe run across this valley up into this woods to the south of us. Couldn't tell how big the buck was because it just happened so fast and Scott wasn't able to get him on video. So, I mean, there are some deer moving. Hopefully we can uh, catch a big one tonight. I am uh, itching to see a shooter buck and to put an arrow in one, so it's about time. It's been 10 days since we heard of an arrow to deer, so the doe might be in trouble tonight as well. turkey tags in my pocket. I got my first Missouri kill right there, baby, on a nice beer. Bearded Tom. Smoked him at 25 yards. He flew across and died right on the other side of the draw. Did you see him go down? Yeah. We get so excited about this Dude, that's like impossible to kill a turkey on a tree. Alright, it's about 2.20. There's a really big uh, thunderstorm coming. It's not going to last very long, but it's uh, going to be raining hard enough that uh, we got to get our camera equipment put away, so 
We're going to go grab my turkey. We're going to head back to the truck. And as soon as it stops raining, we're going to come right back in here. It's only about a 250, 300 yard walk. So we're just going to zip out, we'll wait the storm out, and come back in. So. Is that tag gone? Are you kidding me? Oh my, that is a trophy, dude. NBC, $100 reward. <laughs> it is not. Let me see. Look at it. $100 reward. Is that a tracker? Are you kidding me? I didn't, we didn't even see any of this. All right, well, we got over here my turkey, and uh, we got him tagged up here, and uh, he's got an inch and a quarter spurs. Gosh, he's got to have at least a 10, 11 inch beard, and uh, just a beautiful bird, and he's got a band on him. It's, uh, you know, shooting a turkey like this, it's like a once in a lifetime thing. It's got this radio collar on it, um, tracking device, so we get back to the truck, we're going to go ahead and call the number and uh, see what the deal is from here, but... This is pretty amazing, and, and on top of that, we shot it out of a, a deer stand. And for those of you who are bow hunters, you know how hard it is to actually get a, a shot at a turkey out of a deer stand. And uh, I think the windy conditions really helped us with that. So we're pretty excited. Hopefully, we can get back in this afternoon and uh, shoot a monster buck and top off the day. Turkeys are a lot more concerned about colors and shapes than deer are. It is tough to fool a turkey even if you're sitting motionless in your stand. When you're not in a blind, you need an effective camo pattern to trick their sharp, paranoid eyes. Realtree Camo allowed Paul and Scott to pull off this difficult task. A turkey's kill zone is about the size of your fist. It takes an accurate shot to hit something that small under hunting conditions from 25 yards. Paul's Hoyt Carbon Spider was more than up to the challenge, helping him place the perfect shot. Redneck's portable chair is perfect for blind hunting. It swivels quietly so you can cover every window silently and effortlessly, and it is extremely comfortable making it perfect for long sits. Next I have a stand placement tip. In most situations now, I try to set my muddy stand on the back side of the tree, away from the direction the deer are most likely to approach. Deer almost never see me when I'm set up this way. The only trick to this stand placement strategy is to have a stand with a lot of adjustability. It is tough enough standing for hours, but it would be impossible if the platform weren't level. Muddy makes solid, quiet stands with all the adjustment I need to hunt using this effective style. Tornado warnings and high winds dominate the weather forecast, so I stay put in the valley, safe within the redneck blind as the red blob on the radar passes overhead. Well, it is the afternoon of November 11th, and Troy and I are continuing the quest to try and find uh, George Brett. We are set up in what seemed to be his main spot last year when he was on the farm. I actually came in this summer and uh, hung this stand specifically for this deer. Um, he always seemed to come out of this little cut um, that's right across from us coming out in this food plot. You either come out and feed, check those, or you cut straight to the creek here. We got a creek right on our backside. That's what we walked in to get here. The last few days we've been going all over, hanging, hunting multiple times each day, um, trying new spots, trying to find uh, where this deer could possibly be. And uh, without any success, we're just kind of throwing it all out the window, going back to the spot that I, I knew he was last year. I got a lot of pictures, more pictures in this spot than anywhere else on the farm. I have a camera right here. I'm not getting any pictures of him on this camera, um, but I'm not putting too much stake in that. I'm just going back to the basics and coming to his what was his core spot. So hopefully uh, the educated wild guess pays off.
With each day that passes, without a trail cam picture or sighting of George Brett, my confidence continues to go downhill. But in the back of my mind, I know historically the best time on this farm is late November, so I'm not giving up yet. It's about 3.45 right now, and uh, we've seen five does, fawns, yearlings. Uh, not a good sign that the fawn and yearlings were still with them, though. We've been oddly seeing that a lot lately. Um, so I'm not sure what the deal is there and actually we haven't seen a, a cruising buck in a day and a half now so something going on this farm whether they're all packed into one area or uh, you know, those are changing food sources and therefore the bucks are relocating I'm not sure but we're trying to figure it out the winds picking up big time uh, big storm moving in gonna be some severe We'll see what happens. Hopefully the weather holds off just long enough for us to get it done. Jared's been setting up hunting farms for several years. One of his keys is to use a lot of small, isolated plots that the deer feel comfortable coming into even in daylight. His top choice of food plot seed for these small plots is frigid forage Big and Beastie because it grows well under a wide range of conditions and the deer love it. A lot of the sponsors that we use on Chasing November and Midwest Whitetail are products that I've used for a long, long time and believe in. A major one of these is the Scott Releases. I started shooting Scott back in 1990. They've never let me down, they're super reliable, and I think that's the most important thing that a release aid can do. And you can definitely trust a Scott to work every time. The way you position your ozonics in the tree is important to how effective it is at controlling your odor. The ozone has to go through and mix with your scent stream in order for the ozone molecules to destroy the human scent molecules. If the wind is light, you can point the unit uh, downwind at a higher angle so that it carries farther out. The stronger the wind is, the more you have to point it downward so you get a more aggressive shot of the ozone going through your scent stream. So keep that in mind uh, to get the most benefit from your ozonics. You have to pay attention to exactly where you point the ozone output. Fuse Helix microsites permit easy adjustment without the use of Allen wrenches. Even though you turn the knob to move the sight body, it stays firmly in touch with the sight extension bar the entire time, so you never need to lock it down. With this feature, you can quickly adjust the position of your sight pins when you're sighting in your bow. Warm, wet days rarely produce good hunting, even in November but this time Aaron beat the odds. All it takes is a hot doe to turn your season around in a matter of only a few seconds. That is my hope now as we slip into the peak breeding phase of the rut. Tomorrow's forecast is for cooler temperatures and a northwest wind. That should bring an increase in deer movement. We all rally around Aaron's success. The great public land balk proves that even when conditions aren't perfect, you are never out of the action when you are chasing November. <laughs>